All right, today we will be covering lesson 2-4. Equations with no solutions are infinitely many solutions. Today's lesson will be chunked into three separate sections. The first section we will be covering is lesson 1-2. On the very first slide of this presentation, you should have unpacked your learning targets that stated we were going to identify equations that have no solutions, and we're going to identify equations that have infinitely many solutions. On the previous slide, you should have seen this. Remember that a solution of an equation with one variable is a value of the variable that makes the equation true. Then you should have also seen this paragraph right here that says an equation has no solution if there is no value of the variable that will create a true mathematical statement. An equation has infinitely many solutions if there are, are an unlimited number of values of a variable that will create a true mathematical statement. And the math tip also appeared on that page. It said, an equation is true when both sides of the equation have the same value. Otherwise, the equation is false. For instance, 2 plus 3 equals 5 is a true mathematical statement because 2 plus 3 has the same value as 5. 2 plus 3 equals 6 is a false mathematical statement because 2 plus 3 does not have the same value as 5. 6. So we're going to take a look here at question number one, and I'm actually going to work through question one with you along with question two. So let's take a look at these two. It says the set of numbers 1 half, 3, 6, 17, 0, and 11 contains possible solutions to the following equations. Determine which of these numbers are solutions to each of the following equations. I'm actually going to work this on a separate piece of paper because I can see that I will not have enough room to try all of these. So we're going to start with letter A. Letter A says 9x plus 5 equals 4 parentheses x plus 2 plus 5x. And the solution set that it gave me was 1 half, 3, 6, 17, 0, and 11. And basically what it's asking me to do is it's asking me to try each one of these to see which one of these makes the equations true. So we're going to start off by plugging in 1 half for my x values. So I've got 9 times 1 half plus 5 equals 4 parentheses 1 half plus 2 plus 5 times 1 half. Well, 9 times 1 half is 4 and a half. And four and a half plus five is nine and a half. So I got nine and a half on the left hand side. Let's take a look to see what the right hand side simplifies to. We've got four parentheses one, sorry, one half plus two. So that's four times two and a half. And we've got five times a half is two and a half. Well, I need to know what four times two and a half is. Four times two and a half is going to be 10. So I've got 10 plus two and a half. Well, nine and a half equals 12 and a half. True statement Hopefully we say that's a no. So this would be false. So I know that the answer is not half. Let's take a look at the next one. Let's plug in three. So we've got nine times three plus five equals four parentheses three plus two 
plus 5 times 3. Well, 9 times 3 is 27 plus 5. 27 plus 5 is 32. Here I have 4 parentheses 5 plus 15. Well, 4 times 5 is 20, and 20 plus 15 is 35, and 32 does not equal 35. So again, false. All right, so we've tried the 1 half, we've tried the 3. Now we're going to try 6, okay? So I'm going to do 9 times 6 plus 5 equals 4 parentheses 6 plus 2 plus 5 times 6. So every time I see the X, I'm plugging in the 6 here. 5 times 6 is 54, and 54 plus 5 is 59. Over here, I've got 4 times 8 plus, well, 5 times 6 is 30. 4 times 8 is going to be 32, so I have 32 plus 30. If we add 32 and 30, we get 62. Again, these do not equal, so I'm going to say that this is false. Let's try the next one. This time we're trying 17. 9 times 17 plus 5 equals 4 parentheses 17 plus 2 plus 5 times 17. Nine times 17 is 153, and I did do that in the calculator. And we're gonna add five to that, that's 158. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna say 17 plus two is 19, so I'm gonna do four times 19. Then I'm gonna do five times 17 is 85. Well, what's four times 19? Let's find out. That's going to be 76, so I've got 76 plus 85. So 158 equals 76 plus 85 is going to be 161. Those do not equal, so again, another false statement. Okay, let's try these last two options. I got 0 and 11. So let's try 0. I got 9 times 0 plus 5 equals 4 parentheses 0 plus 2 plus 5 times 0. 9 times 0 is 0. And 0 plus 5 is 5. Here I have 4 times 2 plus 0. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 0. Well, 5 does not equal 8. So again, this is false. And the last one we're going to try is number 11. So we're going to do 9 times 11 plus 5 equals 4 times 11 plus 2 plus 5 times 11. So every time I saw the X, I plugged in the 11. Well, 9 times 11 is 99. So we've got 99 plus 5 is going to give me 104. Here I'm going to have 4 times 13 plus 5 times 11 is 55. 4 times 13 is 52 
and we're going to add 55 to it. So 104 equals 107. Those values are not the same. So again, false. So which of the choices that they gave me worked to make this equation true? I got a false statement, a false statement, a false statement, false, false, false. So none of these solutions worked. So none of the solutions worked. Now we're going to move on to a new equation and we're going to again try the six answer choices they gave us to see which one of these work. So I'm going to write down B here. B states 7x minus 10 equals 3x plus 14. All right. Now recall our numbers from earlier. We're going to try in 1 half, 3, 6, 17, 0, and 11. Okay. So I'm going to start off with my 1 half. I got 7 times 1 half minus 10 equals 3 times 1 half plus 14. Well, 7 times 1 half is 3 and a half minus 10. And we're going to subtract 10 from that. We get negative 6 and a half. Sorry, I didn't mean to go changing that on you. It's negative 6 and a half. Let's take a look over here. 3 and a half, or sorry, three times a half is one and a half. And we're going to add 14 to that. So 1.5 plus 14 is going to give me 15 and a half. Clearly, those values do not equal each other. So we're starting off again like we ended the last one with another false statement. Let's plug in 3 here. We've got 7 times 3 minus 10 equals 3 times 3 plus 14. Well, 7 times 3 is 21 and 21 minus 10 is 11. Here I've got uh, 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 plus 14 equals 23. Those do not equal. This is another false statement. All right, let's try the 6. 7 times 6 minus 10 equals 3 times 6 plus 14. 7 times 6 is 42. 42 minus 10 is 32. On this side, we're going to have 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 14 is 32. True. Oh, finally. That's the first true we've come up to. Let's see if any of these other values work. I have 7 times 17 minus 10 equals 3 times 17 plus 14. 7 times 17 is going to be 119 minus 10 is going to be 109. 3 times 17 is 51. 51 plus 14 is going to be 65. It's clearly a false statement. Let's try the next one. 7 times 0 minus 10 equals 3 times 0 plus 14. 
7 times 0 is 0, minus 10 is negative 10. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 14 is 14. These do not equal each other. Again, another false statement. Try the last one. 7 times 11 minus 10 equals 3 times 11 plus 14. This is going to be 77 minus 10, which is 67. This is going to be 33 plus 14, which is 47. These do not equal, so another false statement. So if we look at this one, only one value made the statement true, and that value was 6. So 6 is the only one that worked for this statement. I'm going to flip to another piece of paper. Give me a moment. And we're going to do letter C. So let's take a look. We have... C, 3x minus 12 equals 3x plus 1 minus 15. And we're going to try again. 1 half, 3, 6, 17, 0, and 11. So here we go. 3 times one half minus 12 equals three times one half plus one minus 15. Well, three times one half is going to be one and a half and one and a half minus 12 is going to be negative 10 and a half. Here we're going to have 3 times 1 and a half that's going to be 4 and a half minus 15 so I got negative 10 and a half equals negative 10 and a half true statement hmm. okay let's see what else works 3 times 3 minus 12 equals 3 times 3 plus 1 minus 15 3 times 3 is 9 and 9 minus 12 is negative 3 here we're going to simplify our parentheses, so I got 3 times 4 minus 15. Well, 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 minus 15 is negative 3, another true statement. All right, let's try out 6. So we've got 3 times 6 minus 12 equals 3 times 6 plus 1 minus 15. Well, this is going to be 18 minus 12, which is 6. Over here, we're going to have 3 times 7 minus 15. Well, 3 times 7 is 21 minus 15 is going to be 6, another true statement. Let's try 17. 3 times 17 minus 12 equals 3 times 17 plus 1 minus 15. So here we've got 3 times 17, that's 51. And 51 minus 12 is going to be 39. Over here, we're going to have 3 times 18 minus 15. Well, 3 times 18 is going to be 54. And 54 minus 15 
gives us 39. Another true statement. Got two more to go through. Now we're going to try zero. Three times zero minus 12 equals three times zero plus one minus 15. Well, three times zero is zero and zero minus 12 is negative 12. Over here, we're going to have three times one minus 15. Well, three times one is three minus 15 is negative 12. So negative 12 does equal negative 12. That's a true statement. Lastly, we're going to try out 11. 3 times 11 minus 12 equals 3 times 11 plus 1 minus 15. This is going to give me 33 minus 12. That's going to be 21. Here we're going to have 3 times 12 minus 15. 3 times 12 is going to be 36. 36 minus 15 is going to be 21. So 21 equals 21 is a true statement. So this time we're going to have one half that works, three that works, six that works, 17 that works, zero works, 11 works. So here, all of the solutions that were given work. All right, that leads us into our next section, which is going to be question number two. We're still in section one, but this time we're just covering this bottom part. This bottom part says that Laura, Nia, and Leo solve the following three equations as shown. Identify each of the equations as having a one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions, and justify your answers. Laura worked through this equation. It says negative 5x plus 3 in parentheses minus 4x equals 8 plus 6x. So she did the distributive property. She did negative 5x minus 3 minus 4x equals 8 plus 6x. She then combined like terms. The negative 5x and the negative 4x gave her negative 9x minus 3 equals 8 plus 6x. She's now added 9x to both sides using the addition property. So she has negative 3 equals 8 plus 15x. Now she subtracts 8 from both sides to get her, um, sorry, using the subtraction property because she's trying to get the term with x all by itself. So she's got negative 3 and minus an 8 gave her a negative 11 equal to 15x. Lastly, she uses the division property of equality by dividing by 15 and gets x equal to negative 11 over 15. So my question is, is this going to be a one solution, a no solution, or an infinitely many solution? Well, I have x equal to a value. So this is actually going to be a one solution. What this states is that if I plug in negative 11 over 15, this will make the equation true. Let's take a look at Nia's equation. Nia's equation said the following. 3x plus 4 minus 10 equals 3x plus 2. So she used the distributive property to start. 3x plus 12 minus 10 equals 3x plus 2. Then she used combining like terms because she simplified this 12 and negative 10. So she has 3x plus 2 equals 3x plus 2. She subtracts 3x from both sides. Notice what happens. You've canceled out your 3x's because 
this has gone away and my 3x on this side has gone away. So I'm left with 2 equals 2. Is that a true statement or a false statement? This is true. So that means we have infinitely many solutions. That means no matter what value I choose, I could have chose 100, we could have chose 10, I could have chose 0, I could have chose negative 1,000. If I would have plugged in a negative 1,000 into both of these x's, the equation would have come out to be a true statement in the end. They would have equaled each other. Okay? Here, Leo has 2, 4x plus 3, minus 3x, equals 17 plus 5x. So she, Leo does the distributive property to start off with. He has 8x plus 6 minus 3x equals 17 plus 5x. He has now combined like terms because he has combined the 8x and the negative 3x, gave him 5x. So 5x plus 6 equals 17 plus 5x. He subtracts 5x from both sides. He comes down to a statement that says 6 equals 17. True statement or false? That's a false statement. So this leads us to a no solution. That means no matter what value we plug in here, I can plug in 10, I can plug in 0, I can plug in 20, I will never get the equation to work. They will never be equal to each other because we come out to a false statement when we simplify. So let's recap. X equals something. So the X value still exists, or the X variable still exists. We have one solution. If I come down to a true statement after my X's cancel out, I'm left with infinitely many solutions. If I come down to a false statement and my X's have now canceled out, this is going to be no solution. So no answer will work, all answers will work, and only 11 over 15 negative will work in this case. On to your debriefing question.